Hey YouTube, this is uh, NJ Full Wider 5. I was just looking at something I built one year ago. Mind you guys that one year ago I knew absolutely nothing about electronics. I didn't know nothing about batteries. I just did research, soldered. I even did research on soldering. So when you see this spaghetti hogwash of wiring just don't pay attention it actually works really good I pulled it out and I figured I'd show you guys it's the second project I ever did my first project was a uh, power supply that was a hybrid computer power supply slash XL 4015 I believe it was I'll be showing you guys that later whenever I do a rework I'm actually gonna rebuild it I'm not, not, not going to rebuild it. I'm going to build another one. But the other one that I'm going to build is going to be more up to date. A little bit stronger. I'm going to use it to power a charging station that I'm going to build also. But that's another that's another video. This one right now, I'm going to show you guys this, this little power supply I built. And I built this. This is probably the second one I ever built. I built it because I wanted something portable. When it's something I could adjust the voltage and the amps on as a constant current, constant voltage. Voltage. It uses another XL4015. So let me kind of get into it. As you can see on the front, I believe this is voltage. This is amps. Here are the two banana plugs for the power out meter. A 10 amp, I believe, a 100 volt, 10 amp volt amp meter. This down here, I put this on here for measuring batteries because at the time, you know, I was uh, taking apart, you know, my first laptop batteries trying to make a battery pack of sorts. And I'm going to show you that next because I actually built something to go with this so it'd be portable. It's a little big, but, you know, hey, it was my first one. Uh, anyways, you what you would do is plug in the banana club plugs right here. And I had uh, two... They, they look like they go on the end of a voltmeter and you plug them in here and I can measure batteries as I went. This is actually pretty calibrated. It works pretty well. It's I think it's off like maybe a tenth, but it, but it, you know, it helped me measure batteries real quick, you know, the voltage on them. This right here, I put the DC jack in there and what you did is when you had a plug, like a 12 volt plug or 25 volt plug, and it was DC, you just plug it in right here and the voltage came up here and it let me know that the plug worked correctly. And it was just my way of testing. But this down here doesn't even, it's not even connected to the power supply itself. It was just something extra right here in there to measure batteries. Because this also, this could also charge batteries, believe it or not. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the spaghetti wiring. So as you open it up, you can see the two potentiometers there's two 10, 10k potentiometers that are on the banana plugs. Uh, you can see I put amp meter, volt meter. That's all soldered on. I used, I don't know what kind of wiring at the time. I believe I just used whatever wire I had available to me, which, you know, was pretty limited back then. And I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. If you, you can kind of look down in there and you can see let me get a flashlight. You look down in there, you can see the little buck converter. And it's one of those XL 4015s. I, uh, I had a heat sink at the time. And I wanted to put a heat sink on the XL 4015. So I put a heat sink on it. I used thermal grease. And I held it down using the second heat sink as you can see right there you got the power going in and all it's good junk it goes to a DC jack there and a power switch there and then at the very top I have a small fan and I have another tiny one of those little tiny 5 volt buck converters it was pretty pretty simple setup I'm sure if I built it now it would be a lot cleaner I probably wouldn't use all that shrink wrap solder crap 
I'll do a little bit of testing. So let me see if I can put this back together. I know at the time it was kind of hard because the wiring got in the way. And you snap everything back together. And that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the camera off my stand. It might get a little shaky, and that's only because I want to show you this thing. So let me see. back has more vents I put a uh, that black vinyl stuff all the way around it I used to put that stuff on everything back then to make the stand out I cut small pieces of plastic I had at the time and put them around each hole to make them stand out so that it, it actually looked like it belonged all right let's see if I can get this thing to work right now Okay. Well, you know what? Let me get the battery pack. Might as well just do it right. Here's a battery pack I created back then. And what it was is I created a DC jack on the very top. And this goes to a boost converter that boosts up the voltage to 25 volts, I believe. I, I tried to make it to where it was the max of this. And the boost converter I believe is 10 amps, 10 amp capable. The BMS I have in here I believe is 10 amp capable, might be 20. So this went out from the boost converter and this actually comes straight off the BMS. So I believe I have it in forest configuration. So I could use it either straight off the battery or I could use the DC jack on here and use the, bo the boost converter. Um, I created this little plug at the time I didn't know that there was a different size of the 5.1 and a 5.5 so everything kind of fit kind of loose at the time I mean if I went back I'd probably put you know metal ones on there get rid of these cheap plugs these aren't really worth anything I don't nearly I've, I've got a hundred maybe 200 of these and they'll never get used but anyways it's got an on off on plug uh, up means power to this down I believe is power to this one of them controls this this has never been charged by the way let's see let's see it's got a 16.3 still so the battery pack uh, was stood let's try let's see let's check this and see how this is. Let's see how balanced they are. 410, 47, 44, 48. They're actually not too bad. Okay, so let me show you the inside of this. Okay, so at the time, really didn't know what I was doing this is actually pretty simple it's a pretty simple setup I used battery holders 18650 battery holders I soldered wires across all the cables then it comes down and I don't know if you can see where the black tape is I made kind of like a, sp a splicer of sorts that took me forever to make I was so scared I did it wrong you know because I was new at soldering and stuff but it actually turned out pretty stable, pretty solid. Uh, it connects all four of these in parallel. I guess 4S4P. And uh, let me see if you can get in there and see the butt. That right there is the uh, BMS. Looks like I just used the 20 amp BMS. It goes out from the BMS and it goes to the DC jack up here where you get direct uh, power from the BMS directly. Or when I flip the switch, it goes to this boost converter. And the boost converter, I have it set at I believe 10 amps, 25 volts I believe. I'll have to put it back together and see. 
that's just the switch it's just your basic uh, voltmeter nothing major so yeah also put it put a bunch of these around there I can actually take this out if I wanted to and I can add to it I believe I, I believe I have it where I can add one more if I wanted to I've been thinking about reworking this and adding uh, battery holders this time the uh, the same ones that we use in most of our power walls I'm going with the 4 s 5p configuration not 100% sure yet let me throw this back together and let's get it plugged into this and test it out this is also one of those uh, at the time I was collecting coins and uh, there's a box that you use that you put your coins in and uh, this was one of them that I wasn't using so let's do some testing to see if I can get any voltage out of this okay so right now it's not on but turn the power on I have it set right now at 22 volts. Okay. Let's see what I get going over here. Sixteen three. Yeah, battery pack straight off the BMS. Well, first I would turn it on, make sure it's working, and I would test it. You see that it's 22.1, so that's the DC jack tester. And I'd stick it in here and push the power. You can hear the fan running, it's real light. Let's see if I can remember. Let me turn off this light for a sec. There we go. So there's voltage control, so this must be the amps. Uh, what can I use for a load? So let's do some testing. Let's turn the power on, 16.3. Turn the power on there. I have it set at 12 volts right now. This is just a 12 volt, 20 watt uh, light. Try not to blind you guys. So right now it's running at one amps. Let's turn the amps down. There we go. Uh, this is actually capable of five amps, I believe it is. Uh, this can actually do five amps. I believe it can do 10 amps. I had it set up to use with uh, my power supply two that I made previously. But yeah, this is a pretty good uh, little setup. I mean, it was one of the first things I ever did. And uh, I was actually proud of myself after I was done battery packs kind of hogwash you know it, it works good it's still safe I used uh, shrink tape on everything solder on everything I made sure everything was soldered correctly uh, I took my time on both these I believe this actually took me like three days to build one now it probably take me a couple hours but anyways let's uh, shut this off it's getting hot shut this off now I'll show you the battery tester and that will be the end of this video. This is a battery I haven't put together yet. This is actually, I think I'm gonna put this in a, one of my drills. But anyways, all I would do is I had a pair of uh, testers like this, I believe it was. I have to find out what I deal with them. I had testers like this. 
and I would connect it and as I was testing batteries, all I did was this. Uh, and there you go. 412. 414. 418. 418. 412. And it's off, I mean, it's off maybe a tenth. That's maybe, let's see. It's been a while since I tested it. 412, 413, kind of going back and forth. Let's see what this reads. This reads 411 or 412. So, yeah, it's like off by a tenth. And I knew that whenever I used it, so I always kind of said, all right, so it's 412, battery's 411. But it came in handy in a pinch. It was a pretty good tester. You know, I test my 12 volt. At the time, I did a lot of 3S battery packs and stuff, and that DC jack kind of came in handy. I used power supply quite often. I'd also plug in a, I had a 25 volt, 5 amp, uh, DC plug that I used to plug in here. It worked pretty well. But yeah, this was a fun project. One year ago, I actually have a, I actually have something about it on my Google Plus profile because at the time I wasn't doing videos, I was only just taking pictures. But there you have it, YouTube. Um, XL4015 uh, 5 amp uh, buck converter. I have a tiny fan up here with a 5 volt buck converter, one of those little, I believe they call them a 360. Uh, battery tester, DC jack tester, uh, 4S battery pack that I may rework at another time with a buck converter. Uh, the buck converter, I believe, can go up to 40. 40 I think it go to 42 volts, might be higher, 43, 44 volts, but uh, this uh, buck converter doesn't go that high in voltage. Um, one of my favorite builds, one year ago. Thank you for watching YouTube. Please like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching.